Hi everyone, it is story time again. So several fairies in the village have asked Gloria Love if she could comment on the talking llama in the village known as Dolly Lumbar. I have made a few posts on my social media about where I stand on this particular storyline. So you can follow me on Instagram, Telegram, MeWe, Minds and Gab for my updates. However, there are those who do not follow me on these platforms and would like me to comment on this fictional character. So I don't want to give this situation any more energy than necessary, but I do feel it is important for me to let you know what I feel and see about this character. Gloria Love was actually asked about Dolly Lumbar, the talking llama, a few years ago. So through a through a photographic psychic read, this is what she intuited and picked up. This fictional character is part of the overlord structure. What they do is put leaders into place, people in high areas or um, powerful places, in all domains, and that includes the village governments, the, the village councils, education, health, the sciences, technology, and religion. So this particular individual was groomed from birth to lead in the spiritual field and is one of many similar placed leaders around the village. This is all part of the illusion of freedom and liberty in the village. And so that these leaders can then step up and push the service to self village narrative when they are called to do so, whatever that narrative may be at that time. And they are trained for this and maybe wait years and years and years before they are called to step up and speak or, or take action. This does not mean that they're not educated and trained in actual spiritual or religious doctrine for that particular culture or village domain. They are. This is what is so confusing. They are trained in that doctrine, but what they will hold within is a service to self doctrine, even though they may appear to present a service to others doctrine. In return for stepping up and basically um, doing what they're told to do when they are called to do that, um, in return for that, they will be given certain rewards, if you will, for their services. Those rewards will be things that they like and things that they want, um, which may be things that a service to others individual would not like and would not want. They will be required to take part in the overlord ritual gatherings deep down in the dark well in the village and they will be required to take part in everything that these overlord ritual gatherings um, entail, which might be somewhat uh, sacrificial um, for certain individuals there. Now, what occurred on the day in question was simply the dolly behaving in his natural behavior to him. This is the behavior that he had indulged in his whole life. And what happened was that he simply forgot that the spotlight was upon him at that time. He has got to an age where he's focused on what's happening in front of him and not aware of the greater awareness that he was um, being looked at under the lights, the cameras, the action, if you know what I mean. Now, those who watched this particular um, play out within the fictional village, those individuals who instantly have a, a reaction of distaste, repulsion, shock, horror, and the inner knowing that this is very, very wrong, all these individuals are acting upon aligned, correct, and attuned intuition. 
and they hold a visceral gut feeling, drawing out the masculine, feminine, guardianship, protector energy. You are not wrong to feel horrified or outraged at this particular plot line in the novel. And I have said before that the genre in this novel is predominantly fantasy fiction and somewhat science fiction with elements of comedy and surrealism, but unfortunately also elements of horror. Now, Gloria Love, our protagonist, she is aware that other spiritual and psychic fairies with platforms who speak on the podium in the village are saying very, very different things to her. It is not Gloria's place to comment on what other psychic fairies are saying. And Gloria is not trying to belittle, attack, cancel, discredit or shame any other fairy. Gloria would also like to say that she holds respect for some of these other fairies that are saying things that are opposite to her. However, Gloria has to draw a line in the sand about where she is on this issue and what she is and what she is not prepared to support or um, to endorse. Gloria is not attempting to divide the spiritual community in her village. However, it must be said that this is a huge issue and there will be more similar issues that will yet come to light in future chapters of the novel. So Gloria must draw a line in the sand, as I, as I said, on this one. She must stand in integrity and she must speak about what she knows in her heart to be true. She is simply seeing energetically and delivering her perspective. She is not belittling the perspective of others. She is simply presenting hers. The division within several village communities is already there. And a light is being shone upon this for all to see. The solar eclipse on April the 19th and 20th, 2023, which the nine tell me is two eclipses seen as one, known also as a double eclipse or also a shadow eclipse, is acting as a giant cosmic solar torch or flashlight upon issues that trigger division, for this is about two. This is about the um, bifurcation. So more accurately, what this light is doing is allowing for the awareness of the bifurcation and the need or the pull to choose which aspect of the bifurcation you stand upon. You have to see the bifurcation first before you can choose where you are within that bifurcated reality. And then, once you make that choice, you then move into integration of that bifurcated experience in order to then create unity. Now, so much more could be said about this profound eclipse experience, but I wanted to mention this right now as this is why the story about Dolly Lumbar, the talking llama, and the subsequent fallout, specifically in religious and spiritual circles, is occurring right now. For this is the beginning of the breakdown of the old structure and the rise of the new in this context within religious and spiritual arenas. Now this encompasses much within those arenas. But the main play out here is the fall of the guru or leader and the rise of the individual that needs no guru. I will say that again. The main play out here is the fall of the guru or leader 
and the rise of the individual that needs no guru save self. And thus, the rise of the enlightened and ascended collective. Thank you for listening. Magenta Pixie. I am just so, so happy to be able to announce to you that my new book is available. The Diamond Codex and the Quartz Key. Accessing the accelerated Stargate system through crystalline transformation of the genetic code. What does it mean to transmute one's DNA from carbon-based to crystalline within the context of spiritual enlightenment and physiological evolution? Practical templates for photonic light gene expression, alchemical unification and light body activation are provided within this channeled transmission Delivering this codex at a time within humanity's awakening and expansion when synchronicity is abundant. The mysteries of the accelerated Stargate system as an intelligent living infinity structure call the star seeds of Earth to remember why they are incarnated here and what they came here to do. The downloads, epiphanies and realizations that will organically come to each starseed as they immerse themselves within this sacred text are catalysts for those memories. Introducing Dreamwalker, the story, presented through my interdimensional dialogue with the monadic light structure that is the white-winged collective consciousness of Nine. This book has been such an absolute delight and joy to transcribe from the Nine, and I truly hope you enjoy reading it. Available in paperback, hardcover and Kindle.